Penso que ainda estamos autorizados a cinco minutos. Não sei. Temos ação de encerramento. Se quer... Ou não? Ok. Só apenas para uma ou duas. Just one or two questions. Okay, but... um, bom, agora que estamos a chegar. Now that we are about to close, I didn't want to raise a question, but instead to say just to steal you one or two minutes, if you allow me. I, I, I swear it's not a question. May I? because I will not have another opportunity to say it. Well, I would like to say to my colleagues, to those European judges and prosecutors that are fighting for the rule of law in especially <laughs> difficult circumstances, that we will stand up with you every step of the way and justice will prevail no matter how long it takes. Those who want to destroy the rule of law, make no mistake, they shall not pass. And allow me to say a word to remember the names of two courageous Italian judges that gave everything, even their lives, on behalf of the rule of law. Giovanni Falcone and Paolo Borsellino, representing so many others. Because there are here with us Italian colleagues, I would like to tell them Grazie mille per l'impegno e il coraggio nella lotta per la giustizia. Complimenti. Finally, and especially today, that we celebrate the birthday of the Fondazione Giovanni Falcone, born exactly 29 years ago, I would like to say, with all my gratitude, grazie mille, tanti auguri. Thank you. Since there are no other questions, I would like one question. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Emil Dechif. I'm a judge from Bulgaria. And I have one question. Um, you spoke a lot about the independence of the prosecutors, uh, which, of course, I understand very well why you speak so much about this. But uh, we have one problem. If you are absolutely independent from the other powers, then how you will be accountable? On the other side, if, for example, the prosecution office is part of the executive, then there is a risk politicians to abuse the prosecutors, to temptate, to use them as an instrument for uh, seeking some political aims and not following the, the law. So what remedies, according to you, are <clears throat> needed to find a balance between these two extremities? And one small question, how is important in your countries to investigate general prosecutor if there is some suspicion that he has committed a crime. Who would do this and how you regulate it, um, such kind of preliminary investigation uh, and prevented the risk the general prosecutor or his deputies to interfere in such kind of preliminary investigation? Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I think two questions, different questions were raised. On the one hand, it's important to have internal norms allowing to control 
the lack of autonomy of prosecutors, of the public prosecutor's office. It's important to have, as I said in my speech, norms that will allow to control this lack of autonomy or norms also that will prevent that one can manipulate the action of the public prosecutor's office. But what is even more important, we should also have norms that will guarantee also the respect of the media, for instance, the autonomy of prosecutors or judges. We also have to preserve this autonomy. In addition, a, a, a general attorney is submitted to legality. In the case of Spain, we can uh, we can prosecute the uh, attorney general in the High Court of Justice because there is a reserve of re jurisdiction for the general, the state's general attorney. Of course, they are subject to the law. They are subject to the criminal investigation because it should be like that. And in addition, and more important, the duty of the the state general attorney should also be transparent, submitted to the principle of legality, but also with all the guarantees. I think it's important to have the possibility to guarantee the independence inside, outside, or any space that can affect this independence or autonomy, including the one of the media. when you put a question regarding uh, the influences of different uh, uh, institutions within the judicial approach. Uh, to tell you the truth, I think that we have um, made an important evolution from Montesquieu uh, with a clear three separation of powers. Um, I, right now, I feel much more attached to the Anglo-Saxon perspective of checks and balances. Uh, from Dicey. So, uh, in fact, uh, I, I made clear in my intervention that everything is hybrid right now, and I think that from the constitutional point of view, that approach is becoming hybrid as well. It's, it's quite interesting that you put that question. I'm really sorry that I cannot go uh, ahead more than that brief statement, but my, my approach at least is, is that I, I have simply underlined. Thank you very much indeed. Regarding the two topics, and very shortly, I said in terms of internal controls and interaction of powers, the public prosecutor's office doesn't have a, one single solution or a consensual peaceful solution. But the core model will be to have a balance of checks and balances and also several plans of intervention on the one hand in making them accountable for the decisions, uh, the man be management of procedural issues and also at the plan of the decisions of the magistrates of the process of the case and also the mechanisms to intervene and to avoid dispersion and also absence of controls, namely, both of decisions of abstention or decisions that can really reach the functioning of the state of law, the rule of law. By the action of the public prosecutor's office, we saw several times today that this uh, public prosecutor's office should not allow for uh, violation or breaches or, or, or offenses and also that their powers for actions that can limit the operation of other entities. Here, we don't have um, a peaceful solution, but for sure, uh, 
the independence and autonomy component of the prosecutors have to be integrated in a number of uh, control mechanisms regarding the specific question of the general or attorney in our system. The solution is very similar to the Spanish case. If the general attorney is suspected of having committed a crime, the, uh, the duty is it's not within the... Uh, it will be a judge of the Supreme Court of Justice who will be dealing with uh, this case. It will not be the, the, the public prosecutor's office to, to deal with it, to ensure impartiality. Just to finish, I'd like to thank the speakers, and we close this panel. And we will pass on to the closing session immediately.